One of the things that seems to stand in our way of uh, being happy is that shit happens. <laughs> now, this is actually the common denominator for all human experience. The fact is that even if we are the luckiest, most effective people on the planet, life sometimes deviates from our plan. And it's just like the Rolling Stone said, you can't always get what you want. And that can be quite stressful. But of course, you all know that shit happens. What is less well known is that we also we all have the power to change our experience of the shit to uh, train and learn how to uh, have a better attitude about it and uh, how to suffer less through really anything that might happen to us. Today, I'm gonna to show you evidence that this kind of training can not only make you feel better, it can also change the way that your brain works. And the key practice I'm gonna talk about is a practice of mindfulness. Now, mindfulness is rooted in ancient Buddhist traditions that are aimed at the cessation of suffering. It's actually part of a system of practices that include things like loving kindness, generosity, and compassion, and it's cultivated through the practice of mindfulness meditation. In a secular context, mindfulness has actually been studied for over 30 years, and many scientists, including me, think about it as a two-component process, where the first component is attention that is oriented to this present moment, to whatever is happening to you, so you can engage with your life. The second component is attitude, and it's attitude that's open, it's curious, and it's accepting of this moment exactly as it is. And one classic instruction is to pay attention on purpose and without judgment. Or in the words of the Beatles, you just let it be. <laughs> now, why might training like this be useful? Well, one reason is because most of us are incredibly distracted pretty much all the time, and we miss a lot of what's happening to us. One study showed that our minds are actually wandering almost 50% of the time and during every single activity, even during sex. And what's worse is that mind wandering is actually related to being unhappy. And that suggests that being mindful in itself might make you happier. And it leaves you a lot more time and energy to act wisely and make good decisions. That means that being mindful allows you to respond to the world rather than react to it. And how does mindfulness do that? Well, one way it does it is by altering the brain's defaults. That is a default mode network, and you can think of it as our autopilot. It's a network of regions that's more active when our mind is spontaneously wandering and less active when we're focused on a task. And to test whether mindfulness meditation alter these defaults, we recruited experienced mindfulness meditators, not Buddhist monks, but healthy Western adults who just happened to meditate for many years, kind of like me. Uh, and we then scanned their brains using fMRI and compared their brain activity to the brain activity of well-matched control who've never meditated. What we found is that experienced meditators actually show, report a significant uh, lower amount of mind wandering and less activity and connectivity in their default mode network. Does it mean that you all need to practice many, many years to change your defaults? Apparently not. Much less training already starts changing your defaults. In one study, stretch adults were uh, recruited and randomized into one of two conditions. They either did intensive mindfulness training for three days or three days of a control training. The results showed that even after three days of intensive mindfulness training, there were already some similar changes to the default mode network that were similar to what we saw with the experienced meditators. In addition, those who meditated also showed a reduction in an inflammation marker that is related to disease risk. In comparison, those who did the control training actually showed an increase in this inflammation marker. In addition, the default mode network actually was responsible for some of the reduction uh, in inflammation. This suggests that mindfulness training changes your brain, it changes your emotional experience, and it changes your body in a way that makes you more resilient to stress and disease. And there's even more good news here. You might start noticing some of the benefits of mindfulness meditation as soon as the first time that you try. We tested this in a few recent studies. We recruited individuals who've never meditated, and we randomized them to either meditate for 10 minutes for the first time or do a control activity for 10 minutes. We then tested their uh, performance on a task that required both accuracy and speed. What we found is that those individuals who meditated for the first time overall were faster or more accurate than those who didn't meditate. And we also saw changes in brain activity that suggested that their brains are more attuned to the task, allowing them to perform better. What this means is that uh, in the time that it might take you to just briefly check your email, you might try to uh, meditate for 10 minutes and you might have an improvement in your cognitive performance. So in conclusion, I invite you to ask yourself, do I want to be more focused? Do I want to be more present? Do I want to have more time and energy to, uh, <laughs> to uh, make, act wisely and make good decisions? If you answered yes to any of these questions, you might want to try um, mindfulness meditation. Now, mindfulness is not for everyone, and it's not a panacea. But we know that it can fundamentally alter your brain's defaults. We know that it can uh, reduce your stress and make you more focused. And importantly, it can allow you to live in this moment, uh, accepting it exactly as it is, maybe even loving it exactly as it is, even if shit happens. Thank you very much.